What do things like your name, your email address, your manager's name and email address, the current quarter of the year that we're in today, what do all those things have in common? Well, they are not going to be changing throughout the usage of the app. They are not going to vary. So why have we been setting all of those things as variables in Canvas apps? Well, the reason we've been doing that is because up until recently, there has not really been a great way to declare them as something, anything other than a variable. In normal programming, programmers or developers would set these things or define these things as constants in their code, but there just hasn't been a way to do that in Canvas apps. About a year and a half ago, Microsoft introduced us to the concept of named formulas. However, named formulas have been an experimental feature in Canvas apps, and because of that, I just haven't felt comfortable making a video about them. Very recently, Microsoft has moved the named formulas feature out of experimental and into preview. So now we are very confident that we can make a video on it and Microsoft is not going to take this property away from us anytime soon. So without further ado, let's dive into the app and discover how to create these named formulas and how to reference them and what they can be in your application. So right here, I have a simple Canvas app to display some of these things that are, like I said, constants. They're things that are not changing. I have my user email address. I have my manager's name. I have the first day of the month that we are currently in, and I have the current quarter. Now again, these are things that are not changing. So on this screen, I've set these up as variables, just to show how we would do that in the past. So these are all, if we look at the text of these labels, they're all var user email, var my manager dot display name. This one is var first day of month, right? These are all variables. And where I would go to set these in the past was if you go to the app and you go to the on start property, this is where I'm setting all of my variables. So set variable var header background, set var user email. However, there's a much easier way to do that now so to make sure that that setting is turned on, let's go to the settings. We'll go to upcoming features and I'm gonna search for named formulas. You'll see that there's a setting called named formulas and it's in the preview tab, which means it is no longer an experimental feature, which is why I'm comfortable making a video about now. So now that we've got this named formulas setting turned on, let's see, where do we go to set those formulas? Well, again, that is also going to be in the app and you'll go to the formulas property. Now this is where you start setting your formulas. So the syntax here is whatever you want your named formula to be, we'll call it, uh, I'm gonna start referring to these formulas as constants because it just makes more sense to me. Your things that are not changing, right? So an easy one is going to be user email, let's say. User email. So you'll say the name of your constant and then equals and then the value that you want to assign it, user.email. Now for this to register, you also have to put a semicolon after. Even if it's the last thing in your named formulas, even if you only have one, you have to put a semicolon for, it to, for the app to recognize it. So I have this uh, named formula called user email. And let's go ahead and go to a new screen where we have my SCR named formulas. And I've got the same layout here. I've got user email, the manager, first day of the month, so on and so forth. Now, if I go to the label, let's put in our new constant here, our user email. So if I start typing user, you'll see that it's in my IntelliSense. I didn't even have to run the on start for it to recognize, and it's populating perfectly with my email. Now to get something like my manager, um, I was displaying my manager's name before on the other screen in SCR variables. And we'll see that what is var my manager. Let's go take a look at that variable and see what it is. So we go to the app, we go to the on start property where I set that variable and we'll see, um, let's look at my manager. So we're setting my manager to office 365 users dot manager V2. And I'm using my email address to look up my manager. So because I'm not specifying which field from that Office 365 user I wanna bring back, it's bringing back an entire record. So just like variables, 
Constants can be anything from a string of text, a number, it can be a record, it could even be a table. So let's go back and I'm gonna to go to my SCR named formulas again. And let's take a look at how we would set this manager as a constant. So again, I'm gonna to go to app, I'm gonna to go to formulas, and I'll make another formula. And for this one, I'm gonna call this my manager. And we're going to set my manager to Office 365 users dot manager v2. And the ID of the uh, user that I want to look up the manager for is myself. And now that I've got a constant in the app, I can actually use user email as a way to look up my manager. So that is going to return an entire record. Now, if I wanted to make my manager the display name, I could just do dot display name, and that would return the display name of my manager. So let's go into this label here for manager, and let's use my manager, and it's returning the text, Brian Knight. Now, if I wanna go back to my app, and let's make my manager the record instead of the display name, the entire record we want. And now real time, that label is turning into an error. So I can go in and say, okay, this text here should be my manager and because my manager is now a record. We can do dot display name and it's returning Brian Knight just like it was before. Now that I have my manager stored as an entire record, I can pull back any information I want. I can say my manager dot mail that will return the email address. I can do my manager dot city, so on and so forth. You get the idea. So I'm gonna keep this as my manager dot display name. Let's take a look at the next one. So first day of month on my variables screen, we'll see that it's displaying 7 1 2023 because we are in July and I wanna return the first day of this month. So that's working well. Let's go take a look at how I set that. So I'm gonna go to the app. I'm gonna to go to on start and we'll look at var first day month. And we'll see I'm setting it to the date value of we're taking the month from today, putting a, col a slash in there, and then a one, and then another slash, and then the year of today. I'm sure there's a better way to return that, but <laughs> that's the easiest way I could think of on the spot. So let's go set that as a constant in our app. So in the app, I'm gonna go back to formulas, and let's do, instead of var first day month, I'll just call this first day month. I'm gonna set that equal to month of today and uh, we'll do and slash one slash and the year from today. We'll put in a semicolon, and now I wanna convert that whole thing to an actual date. So I'll we'll do date value around the entire formula. And at the end of this line, I'll just close off my parentheses. And let's go to our named formulas screen and see if that worked. Again, the nice thing is here, I don't have to run the on start to populate that variable. It's just a constant that we are defining in the formulas property of the app. So for the text here, let's put in first day month and we've got 7-1-2023, beautiful. Now the current quarter that we are in, let's go take a look at how we set that. So if we go to the app, we go to the on start, and we look at the current quarter. Now the way that you do this uh, is you basically take the month that we are in, which would be seven, you divide that by three, and then you round up to the nearest whole integer. So let's take that same process, and I'm gonna go to the formulas section. And let's set that constant. So I'm gonna call this current quarter equals and then we'll do the 
month of today, which is going to return 7. And then we'll divide that by 3. So let's see what that gives us, right? That's going to give us current quarter. What did I call that? Oh, the reason it's not picking up in the IntelliSense, right? It's not picking it up. It's picking up my variable, but not my named formula. And the reason for that is I didn't put a semicolon at the end of this line. Now I'll go back to this label. Let's do current quarter. And it's giving us 2.3333, repeating, and that is exactly what I expected. Let's go back to our app and our formulas, and let's round this whole thing up to the nearest integer. So we're going to round up. We want to round up with zero decimals, and that's going to return three. We are in the third quarter of the year. Now, as I've shown, these constants can be strings of text, they can be records, they can be dates, they can be numbers, they can also be tables. So the last one I wanna do here is let's do my manager's direct reports. So we have a gallery here. If we go to the items, it is currently blank. So let's go to the app, Brian's direct reports, are not going to change throughout my usage of the app, no matter what I do, unless I really screw something up in a bad way and he doesn't want to be my manager anymore. That's a constant, that's not a variable. So I'm gonna set my manager reports. And the value I want to assign to that is gonna be a table. So we'll do, again, office365 users dot direct reports and I can also, just like I do in variables, as I'm setting variables in the on start, I can use a previously set variable in a future variable that I'm setting. Same way here with my formulas. I can reference a formula that comes before this one and it will still work. So I'll use for direct reports, who do we want the direct reports of? Well, let's do my manager dot mail as the ID for Brian, and that's gonna return an entire table. Now we have to do dot value, and that will give us the actual fields within that object. So I'll put a semicolon right here, and again, I called this my manager reports. So let's go to this gallery. We'll pop in my manager reports, and there we go. It can also be a table. So hopefully this helps demystify the named formulas a little bit. If you are a programmer or if you have a development background, hopefully you are excited about the fact that we can finally set constants in our Power Apps. So thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. If this was helpful, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you again in the next video. Thanks, everyone.